Consider the integral 1 over x squared dx from 0 to 1. Now this might not seem like that um, crazy of an integral, but um, let's, let's look at what we're really trying to find here graphically. Now from our Desmos plot, you can see that if we wanted to find the area in blue here, that's not going to be too bad in this case. But the problem here is that our, our lower limit is actually not there. It's actually going down to 0. And as you can see, if you, when you bring a or the, the lower limit closer and closer to zero, you can imagine that this um, function value here is just is going to get increasingly higher. In fact, when x equals zero, it's going to be, the function value is going to be undefined. It's going to be infinity. So we've got, when you're trying to take this area, when you're taking this final last little slice here, it's, inf it's infinitely high. So that creates kind of um, a problem or kind of a, um, um, something that's that's a little out of the ordinary to, to figure out, right? But um, it turns out we can use a very similar process that we used um, in the last video, and it turns out it's actually pretty easy if you're if you're careful about it. Um, we can we can actually find this value. But before we evaluate it, let's kind of step back a little bit and see where where we're at definition-wise here. So this is um, sort of a, the hierarchy that we looked at in the previous video of um, of types of integrals. In the previous video, we had this problem of e to the negative x evaluated from 0 to infinity, and this was an infinite interval type of improper definite integral. And we found it was equal to 1 and found that it was convergent. Here we're looking at a different type of improper integral, and we're going to call that discontinuous integrand. So this integral here is discontinuous integrand, and it's discontinuous because as you saw in that graphical explanation that when you take your lower limit down to zero, that this um, integrand value is actually going to be infinitely large, which, um, which makes this an improper integral. But it's not actually too hard to solve. We just have to be careful with our, our limit notation, and, um, and we can do it fairly easily, which will bring us to the question of whether or not this discontinuous integrand type of improper definite integral is convergent or divergent. So let's um let's consider that graphically. So here's our plot again and we and the idea is if if we make if we make a get closer and closer is there going to be an infinite amount of area that that falls in the blue here or is it going to converge to a, a definite value? Um it's not really clear just from looking at this. So let's uh let's um take a look. So first thing we want to do is convert this improper integral over here to a proper integral represented by the integral over here and it's proper because now we have a which um, means that we're not we're, the integrand is not actually going to be infinite necessarily so but we have to do to, to maintain this equality is to make sure that we're looking at a as it approaches zero from the positive side. Because as you recall graphically, we were just kind of going from a equals 0 0.1 back closer to, to a equals zero on the positive end. So we evaluate this the same way we did the previous one. We just use the fundamental theorem of calculus part two. Um, we just got to be careful and keep that limit with each step until we actually apply the limit. So next step is just to take that antiderivative of this function and evaluate it at one and a. So we go ahead and plug in 1 and a as we evaluate this. And at this point, we can go ahead and take the limit. Um, of course, the a has nothing to do with this part, so it, this just becomes 1. But as a approaches 0 from the positive side here, we see that a, when a gets really small in your denominator, the value of this fraction is going to get infinitely large. So this is actually going to go to infinity. So now that we've applied the limit, we can just go ahead and evaluate this, and we can see that these negative signs here are going to cancel out. We're just going to let, be left with infinity, and of course infinity dwarfs this 1 right here. So this is just going to equal infinity. Now if we take a look back at our graph here, what we're, what we're seeing is that, is that when A gets really, really close, that that area is just going to grow without bound. It's going to grow infinitely large, and if you want to think of that, um, maybe as um, sort of intuitively, we're just saying like there's sort of think of this as sort of a funnel that's in, that's has all the area in it, and this funnel is sufficiently large that that you can squeeze as much area into this funnel as we like. That area under here is going to increase without bound as we push a closer and closer to zero. And 
we can actually sh um, show that numerically too here because my area is just going to be that the integral um, over this region here as, as, as shown numerically here and you can see that you know when a equals 0 0.1 it's um it's pretty easy to calculate but a gets really small we're just getting increasing faster and faster and faster it's getting bigger and bigger and so Desmos keep values keep increasing but if we keep going all the way to a equals 0 we just get undefined because um Desmos can't calculate that because it is in fact infinite so i think we've um we've demonstrated this sufficiently because both our numerical calculations and our algebraic ones show that this um, integral does in fact go to infinity. So if we kind of step back again and see what we just demonstrated, we demonstrated that this integral does not exist. And, um, another way of, um, like maybe a more general way of saying that it went to infinity. So what we've shown here is this discontinuous integrand type of improper definite integral does not converge to a definite value when we evaluate it by changing the improper integral into the limit of a proper integral so we can say that this integral is divergent.